Good evening, greetings. My name is Brother Herman. I'm with MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization soon coming by the power of our Holy Trinity and the assistance of our communities, more, more, more fortunate uh, people than the uh, less people fortunate, the less fortunate that we're trying to uh, reach. We're working on reaching the less fortunate of our communities by delivering uh, enlightenment and awarenesses of the truths of our origins, spiritual origins, as well as uh, the physical uh, truths that are being allowed to take place uh, this day, uh, in this day and age uh, against our people in the judicial systems and and uh, also in the medical industry, uh, we're going to be providing some counseling as well, free of charge. All of these services will be free of charge. It's a nonprofit organization. We're going to be solely depending on our people to fund this organization by the power of God. I'm sure we'll get it done. Now, with the legal part of it, we're going to be uh, putting together some motions, petitions, and and uh, writs to uh, stop people, our people, from going inside of the, the jails and the prisons. Uh, we're going to try to do our best to prevent the, the, the conviction from taking place, but however, if we are too uh, late to catch the conviction, we're going to try uh, and work on uh, overturning the conviction. With the spiritual aspect, we're going to be using these truths of God's Word to free the spiritual minds that are out there lost and, and bound by the power of Satan's grip and our free will to engage in his tactics. So with that being said, uh, we would like to uh, be used because we were fortunate and blessed enough to receive the truths. And so now that we've received them, me and my partner, Dr. Thomas Yonk of, of uh, Concept and Con CHC, Dot org. You can Google them and see that he is very much up and running and he's doing his part as well. <clears throat> we're, we want to give back because we were freely, we freely received, so therefore we want to freely give back. And that's all we're trying to do and that's all we're working on doing. We will do it one day at a time. One soul at a time, one person at a time, one case at a time. All right, so now this is part B. Part B of a five-part series on saving grace, the process. It is a race that is ongoing and is nonstop until we leave the vessel. When we leave the vessel, then it stops. It's over with. We go up and be to, uh, go up into heaven to be with our our Holy Trinity, our Father, our our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, as well as the uh, spiritual guides, guardian angels, and the hosts that were came before us, the men, women, and children who are who have come and gone before us and they're up there right now helping us from that realm down here in this region. Uh, we we want to bless them first and foremost and we want to bless the hosts that are down here now, the men, women, and children who are down here right now helping, in, uh, helping us uh, do our parts. Uh, God bless the doers, not the talkers. Okay, so part B is the cry out. Cry out meaning uh, you have to be sick and tired of living in an existent state of being in a perished state away from God's presence. When you, won't, you will not cry out, or I did not cry out until I became sick and tired of running around in circles chasing after uh, uh, informations that led me to nowhere. I never got any fulfillment from it. I just got temporary satisfaction, temporary happiness, and all of it all it did was leave me still thirsty and hungry and empty. So that's when I chased creation, but I had to learn to stop doing that and chase the creator of creation. And then when a fun, when I when I when I when I uh made up my mind to do that, a funny thing happened. The creation started chasing me. So now I wouldn't have never gotten tired and cried out had I not uh uh been out there long enough in the wilderness to get sick and tired. So some of us get tired quicker than others, and sometimes it takes a lot longer for us to get tired. In order to use a horse, you must break them. And you, some horses are easily broken than others. Uh, I was one of those tough cases. And some of us are, and some of us are not. And God bless the ones that are not. Now, the part A of the five-part series 
uh, was the uh, birthright, the deliverance of the birthright, uh, which is the awakening, the awareness. Uh, the Holy Spirit will come and quicken our spirit and awaken us to the truths of what we have been rejecting all along. The information, the correct information is the knowledge, and the knowledge and the information is the birthright. The birthright must be passed down from generation to generation in order for us to stay free of generational curses. When we turn away from God, it's the same as cursing ourselves. It is synonymous with asking for a curse. You don't know this because you haven't been taught this, and so one of the... the uh, uh, primary uh, uh, goals of Make Them See the Truth is to teach the correct truth so that we can set our people free. Jesus is the truth, the way and the life. He came and did exactly what he said he was going to do, set us free. He came to set us free. But if you do not believe in Jesus or his mission, then you will not receive his gift of salvation. So therefore, we have to receive the gift in order to be set free. Yes, he came and did his thing, but it doesn't apply and it's not applicable until we receive it. Therefore, we remain bound until we receive the Lord Jesus Christ's gift, Father God's gift by sending his son, his only begotten, the one that had no blemishes, no spots, and went to the cross and took up on our mess, our sin debt he came to pay for and he did that and I receive it freely and God bless those who do but those there are many who have not received it freely and they just don't receive it because they don't totally understand it we have a lot of people walking around here in deception still to this day not realizing that the holy trinity uh uh their main uh spot or place on earth in reference of the chosen people are, is located uh, by an equator, the equator of the earth. The earth is uh, 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 cylindrical, it's, it's circle, it's circular, and in the middle of it, there is an equator. All people that, native people that um, uh, uh, were born in this region uh, were all people of color. And so this is one of the truths that the devil likes to, to keep away from our awareness. He doesn't want you understanding that you are a part of a, a people that is uh, uh, of color. And the people of color are royal chosen people, not what uh, the other uh, 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 races of people uh, will like for us to believe. We are priests, kings. We are royalty. But this is a valued knowledge that uh, if not received uh properly or if not uh, teach properly, uh, uh, it won't be received. And therefore, the ignorant state is what we'll be left in. So the birthright is the knowledge of who you are and where you come from, which if received will be translated into value. Value coming into the perception have uh, allows us to see correctly. It allows us to see uh, our life and our situations and challenges, our circumstances, the way God wants us to see them. But we can't see these, this in a positive light. We can't see the silver lining in the cloud if we cannot understand the knowledge that is sent forth from God, the truth, the Jesus story, the gospel, the good news. We must receive it. We must understand it. We must do research to see that everything that is preached by Make Him See the Truth is true. In Revelations 1, I believe it's uh, 15, uh, it tells you that he had hair like wool and skin of bronze, skin of uh, uh, bronze, or it might say something like uh, br burnished or something like that. And what that means is a dark color uh, or a color of a skin of color. So he's letting us know that he did not come in fair skin. He came in a skin of a tint of color. And that is probably why he was rejected, or one reason at least. The other part was because he brought the truth. The truth is something that we do not want to deal with because it held us accountable, accountable for our actions. And that is why many people will run away from the truth. But when you get tired of running around in circles, 
and you're looking for those answers, but you cannot find them because the devil's job is part of the job is to not allow you to find what will set you free. Okay, makes sense. It should because he has a job to do. We do too, and we plan on doing it. So that was part A, the birthright, the knowledge, which allows us to bring value in our perceptions, how we see and how we think. How we think is how we speak. So if I see myself as valuable, I'll see you as valuable. I'll see everything that God created as valuable. I will not see it as something that I can destroy. I will not be okay with that in my spirit. My spirit is now quickened, so now I'm starting to feed my spirit more than I feed my soul and my flesh, so now I'm starting to be more Christ-like minded because the process has begun of salvation. So part A is the, is the birthright, the knowledge. Part B is the cry out, cry out. The cry out is the cleansing part. That is when the cleansing part takes place. Why? Because God is so just and so faithful. Uh, he's so righteous and so holy that he doesn't come upon us when we're in our mess. The mess has to be cleansed first. And whose job is that? That's not your job. It's not my job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. When we cry out, the Father has been waiting for that day. The Son cannot move or will not move. He can, but he chooses not to move until we cry out. You have not because you ask not. You don't have the right answers because you're not asking the right source. You don't have the right answers because you're still asking resources, creation. You're not chasing the creator. You're chasing his creation. So you keep running around in circles looking for that, those right answers, but you're looking in all the wrong places. Part of uh, our mission is uh, make and see the truth is to get or help or assist you in to looking in the right places. Uh, every pretty much everything we say, if not all things that we are uh, making statements to, our truth. You can uh, find most of it in the in the Word of God, and the other uh, maybe fifteen percent of it will be just common sense. So, which will be related to the Word of God. Now, once we cry out and become tired of the vain search of running around in circles, of just partying and having fun. I don't know what you're, what you were doing. I know what I was doing and I was looking for truths, but I was also partying and having fun. I got tired of that because that didn't get me anywhere. I got tired of looking in the wrong places because that, that didn't get me anywhere. So one day I just got tired after he sent someone to me and told me to quit running. Uh, Brother Brooks said, you know, you need to quit running. I said, running from who? You? He said, no, you're running from God. And I said, I know you got to be kidding. I know you ain't talking about God. And see, at the time I was so green and so so ignorant that I didn't understand that God can send anyone to you, anyone to me, and bring that word through them to me. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that till later on in my process. But now I get it. I understand that God used Brother Brooks to bring forth that one statement that caused me to stop running around in circles and cry out. So later on that night, I, I started seeing myself getting hit by several different cars in several different time periods of my life. I was hit uh, when I was 13. I was hit twice when I was 24. I was hit again when I was 25, and I fell out the car when I was three. I was also hit when I was five by, by a moped, ran over. And each one of these hits could have easily taken me out, but he preserved me, kept me, kept me through. Jesus kept me through all of that. He kept me through because Jeremiah 1 5 says, I knew you before I placed you in the womb. I purposed you. I made you a, a prophet or a, a, a man of God. But that's your positional title. And it, it, it's not ascertainable until you actually cry out and begin your process and go through the process of cleansing and development and preparation and training. And then once the training part is over, then you get to walk it out. Now you get to wear the title and wear it well. Hmm? But you can't do that until you go through the process. And see, we always cry and ask for things, but we don't want to go through the process of getting those things, do we? So we have to be mindful of what we ask for because everything that we ask for comes with a process. Part of telling you the truth is telling you the whole picture, playing the whole tape, not just half, not just the part that you want to hear. Part of 
of becoming an adult and mature adult is being able to accept the whole truth, being able to face it on for what it is, being able to apply it into your character, into your walk, into your daily routines, into your daily uh, treatment of others. That's part of becoming a matured adult. So when you get sick and tired of being a child or sick and tired of running around in ignorance, then you'll cry out. And when you cry out, then you're going to receive because now the Holy Trinity has been released to help you. Why did I say it like that? Because I'm telling you that it's a battle of souls that we're involved in. The war, as we read in the back of Revelations, has been won. Who is the victor? Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us call him Yeshua. Yes, Yeshua has won the battle. The war, I should say. But there's an ongoing battle. Why? Because if you can't beat me, then the only thing you can do is get to the next best thing that I love. And that's my children. If you can't whoop God like Satan found out, then the only thing Satan can do is uh, take some of that which he loves. And what does God love? He loves his best creation. That is you and I. So what we must understand is that this is a battle of souls going on. And it has to be a fair battle, not just an any old kind of battle like a man-made battle because most man-made battles aren't fair. But the battle over the soul must be. Why? Because Satan's going to cry out and say that ain't fair. That's why. So God cannot move until we cry out. You have not because you ask not. Those who ask and seek my face shall receive. You must seek the kingdom of God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. First, seek the creator first. Then he'll send all the creation that you need, the knowledge. Uh, the physical uh, tools that you'll need, the spiritual tools that you'll need, that you and I will need. He won't send them until we cry out first because now he's allowed to release those tools to you and I. He plays by his own rules and his rules are wholly just and fair. And if he's a fair God and it's a fair battle, he has to wait for you and I to cry out. So he will wait until you fall down, until I scrape up my knees, until you bump up your head, until we kill each other enough, until we cry out and we get tired of shedding blood, when we get tired of bruising up each other, when we get tired of bruising up ourselves, we'll cry out, but we won't cry out until then. Once we cry out, the cleansing process starts. Why? Because Jesus said, behold, I knock. And who, who shall, ever, shall open up his door unto me? He, uh, The father and I will come in and sup. Well, that means they won't come in and dwell until our hearts get cleansed up because they're knocking on our heart's door. They're knocking on our heart's door and that door has to be opened by us. It won't be opened by us until we become sick and tired of being sick and tired of running around out here in this wilderness looking for all the right answers in all the wrong places. Making sense? Keep it up. You're going to learn something here, hopefully. So now when the we open the door up, the job of the Holy Spirit is to come in and clean it up. Why? Because you won't invite your parents down from Canada or wherever they live into your spare bedroom for them if that spare bedroom is all messy and junky and dirty. What the first thing you're going to do is what? You're going to clean it up. You and I are going to clean up that spare bedroom to make it ready for who? To make it ready for our parents so that they can have a comfortable stay. So, so much so that they may ne not even never want to leave our, our spare bedroom, but they got to go. <laughs> anyway, so the Holy Spirit does the same thing. The Holy Spirit's job is to come in our hearts and clean up all that junk that we tacked on, that we kept tacking on while we were running around in circles, chasing after drugs, alcohol, opposite sex, uh, vanity, such as fame, fortune, uh, cars, houses, those types of things, trying to keep up with the Joneses causes us to tack on a lot of sin, okay? Trying to uh, outdo each other is a prideful uh, 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 behavior. And pride is uh, one of the number one uh, sins that God hates. He hates a prideful person. 
So what he does is he obeys us. He'll abase us until we, which is the same thing as humble. He'll humble us until, because we can't humble ourselves. And so much so that until we uh, understand who's in charge, who's the boss, where all things come from, and we'll have a better appreciation. We'll grow a gratitude for everything that he allows us to have or oversee, should I say, because nothing is ours, not even our children. We oversee everything. He owns everything. We just call to be overseers of it. But you can't be an overseer of it until you learn how to govern it. Hmm? That's part of our process. That's part of the training process, which is part E. And that'll be coming up here shortly. All right. So what we are doing now is we're talking about the cry out, the cleansing part. Why? Because it is mandatory. It is necessary. It is vital. It is crucial. Crucial to what? To our development process. It is crucial because we have to be cleansed if we want the Father and the Son to come. So we have to be cleansed if we want the Father and the Son to come in and dwell amongst us, which is bringing back the presence of God into our temples, into our vessels, into that tent, which we call a body. That is what temple means in the word of God. That is what the uh, sanctuary means in the word of God. We have to be holy and sanctified, not holier than thou so much that you're no earthly good. That's not what we're talking about. God didn't call you to change your personality that beautiful way that you are. He just called you to change who you and I serve. That's all. So as long as we know who we come from, which is the knowledge, part A, the birthright, we will gain that value to not want to displease our creator. So we'll think first before we act. We'll go into responding instead of just merely reacting. A person reacts when they don't think. Then when they think, then they respond. You see, that's psychology. We'll get into that later. So what we need to do is we need to understand where we come from. Why? Because we'll get the value. Why? Because we need the value in order to allow ourselves to be cleansed up. You're going to get the fire turned up in the frying pan and some of us, most of us jump out. Some of us stay in. We go through our process of cleansing. And then once we go through the process of having that anger taken off, that bitterness taken off, that hate taken off, that uh, uh, unforgiveness taken off, when we have that uh, uh, inability to be patient taken off, that uh, inability to be tolerant taken off, when we have that inability to suffer long taken off, when we're always crying, complaining, that is some things that God does not like. We have to find out about our creator's likes and dislikes. And some of the things he dislikes can be found in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The things that he likes, the character attributes that he loves is the character of his son, which is the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is in the next three verses after Galatians 5, 19 20, uh, to 21. It becomes 22 to 25 is the character attributes that he likes. These are the attributes that we're getting ready for development. That is the part of the development process, which is part C of the saving process. Now, the cleansing part is mandatory. When the cleansing part starts, the fire gets turned up. Things start burning off. He'll do one thing at a time generally. For me, it was anger. I had to learn how to lose my anger. How did I do that? Well, I had to realize that I was angry because I was always looking for the answers and never receiving the answers from creation, whether it be opposite sex, whether it be uh, trying to mask it or trying to ignore it, trying to avoid it by anesthetizing or uh, 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 using so many drugs and alcohol to the point where I was losing uh, consciousness. I didn't want no part of reality, my reality anyway, because I didn't like my reality. So I used to drink and drug and cover up and run away from the truth. All right. So that kept me in a bitter, angry state, kept me in a bitter, angry state of mind because I wasn't getting that which I needed to understand. 
once we receive the substance that we need for understanding, which is truth, then we can stop being angry and bitter because now we can understand what it is that we're going through, which is this thing called life and all the many, many challenges that it comes along with it across our path. If a person can understand what they're going through, then they'll be more less likely, they'll be less likely to become irritated, aggravated, and discombobulated. But if a person cannot understand what it is that you're asking them to go through, then they're going to be more likely to become angry and bitter. All right. So we have to lose our anger by understanding life, understanding our process, understanding the situation, circumstances, and the trials, understanding why we're called to endure tribulation. Because who are we? Jesus had to. Who are we not to? When we understand that, then it'll allow us to lose that anger. It'll allow us to become a little bit more joyful in the things that we're going through because we know that if we make it on the other side of the test or the trial, we know that if we make it on the other side, we can look back like Samson did when he saw the lion after he ripped it in two and went back and looked in and saw the honey that the bees had made up in the lion's carcass and he reached down and grabbed some and tasted it and saw how sweet it was. Well, that's synonymous and indicative of making it through a trial or a challenge and looking back on it and seeing how sweet it is on the other side. That's what that parable means. When we start understanding how God sees, then we can appreciate the design that he has and the plan that he's made for us. Okay, so now we lose the anger that way. We have to lose the unforgiveness. How do we do that? We lose the unforgiveness because we need we all need to be forgiven. And when you come to accept that truth, then you'll realize that someday you're going to need to be forgiven too, by either by your sons, your daughters, or your moms, or your dads, or your, your neighbors, or your constituents, your, your business partners, or somebody's going to have to, your co-workers, going to have to forgive you. huh? But most importantly, God is going to have to forgive you when you take that last breath and that smoky substance that we call a soul comes out and goes down to his knees and looks up and gives the account to that which who is waiting, which will be our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we know? Because it's in the word of God. We're going to look up and give that account of what we did and why we did what we did while we were in this vessel, this tent, this temple. Hmm? So if you want forgiveness, you got to be willing to give forgiveness. How can you expect to receive forgiveness from that which you cannot see if you can't even forgive your brother or your sister whom you can see? That's in the word of God as well. So now we can understand how important it is to forgive. You go from an unforgiving state of exist existence to a forgiving state of truly living. Hmm? Now, that's how we kick that one to the curb. We go from being less tolerant to being tolerant and patient. How do we do this? We do it because we know that Jesus had to meet us where we were. He had to meet us where we're at. So we're called to meet everyone around us where they're at. When that young person or that older person comes across your path and they say something or do something that is offensive to you, well, you have to first know that they're not, may not be on the same level as you are. You also have to know, secondly, that they are a child of God, even though, or a creation of God, even though they may not be a full child of God yet because they may not be in a repentant state yet. There's only the repentant as the children of God. Don't forget the word says you are the children of your devil. So uh, the, the uh, uh, children of your father, the devil. So what he's saying is, is that the devil has children too. Hmm? So if the devil has children and God has children, which children are you? Which child are you? Who do you belong to? Well, Joshua 24, 15 tells us to choose this day whom we're going to serve, whom whose kingdom we're going to be a part of. And so now we understand that that is why he's asking us to choose. You have to make up your mind to become a child of God. You start understanding that it is not the flesh that we're fighting against, but it's just the spirits, that spirits in high places. You know that all things belong to God and all creation belongs to God. So you're able to 
pray for those creations instead of put your hands on them. Instead of destroying creation, now you're helping to save creation, like Paul became a savior of used to be a savior of uh, uh, souls instead of uh, creation and instead of destroying it like he was when Jesus stopped him on the road of Damascus and said, why are you persecuting me? He had no real answer for that. He had to be given the truth just like we do. When we receive the truth, it allows us our, to change our perceptions in the way we see life and creation. We become more appreciative of creation and life and circumstances and of your brothers and your sisters and your neighbors. You'll be less likely to offend them or hurt them because you don't want to displease your father who art in heaven, who's watching down through many eyes of his angels and many eyes of the, the, uh, the, the uh, soldiers that are down here in the vessels right now that are down here working for our Holy Trinity. The Holy Spirit will be in these vessels watching. So therefore, that's how you are. We, he knows what's going on everywhere. That's what makes him omniscient and omniscience because he's able to be everywhere because his Holy Spirit is everywhere. Hmm? That's why Jesus said, it's be better for me if I leave. And they said, why you had to leave? He said, because of the Father will send the Holy Comforter back to you once I leave. So it'd be better for you if I leave. Hmm? That's just a small truth. This has been uh, part B, the cry out. The cry out which allows us to understand why cleansing has to take place. I pray that you are receive something out of this message. I'm cutting it a little bit short, but I think you get the pretty the picture of the cry out process and why it's so important for us to be cleansed up. So that we can go from the uh, uh, ignorant state into the understandable state of understanding everything and why it's ha allowed to happen. Uh, so that we can go ahead and start our developmental process, which is part C. This is Make Them See the Truth. You can find us at youcaring.com forward slash our children's children hyphen seven six one four four nine or make them see the truth at gmail.com. I pray that you help us and assist us into this becoming a full fledged nonprofit and organization into all of our communities in the Tampa Bay area. God bless us all and may you have a great night.